Welcome guys, uh, welcome back. Same boy again, Adam Sling. How you not doing now? Welcome to another video. Anyway, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you guys are watching this video from. So, firstly, I want to wish Nigeria well. You know, despite the political differences, despite uh, the views of uh, so many Nigerians, and despite so many things, guys, generally, yeah, we should wish this country well. Huh? I've been hearing some people making statements. They are saying that ah, we will see worse than what we experienced in the past eight years. Ah, do you think you are going to survive it? I don't want to see worse than what I experienced in the last eight years. No matter the kind of person that is coming, if Tinubu and Setima, I do not want to see worse than what we experienced in the last eight years. Today is 28. Today is the last day President Muhammadu Buhari will be in that office. In fact, today and some few hours tomorrow will be the last President Muhammadu Buhari will be in that office. We are coming to a new dawn. And please, it will do you good if you are in Nigeria, living in Nigeria, and even Nigeria living in diaspora, to wish this country well. Although some people living in diaspora can't decide out of emotion to say, oh, you will never be better at those things. No, 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 no. They can't. But you living in Nigeria, you that is feeling the pain directly, that doesn't have any means to jackpa. You are in this country, you woke, you wake up in this country, you sleep in this country, and you go to work in this country. There is a need for you to pray for Nigeria. There is a need, despite who is coming. Because we cannot escape it. I cannot escape it. I already know that I cannot escape it. I do not want to leave this country. If I want to leave Nigeria, it's for vacation and come back to Nigeria. Honestly, I love my country. It's not like love, but I want to stay in Nigeria. I feel really, really, I like the independent. I can fight wherever I want to fight for this country. I want to leave. So I wish Nigeria well. I wish it well for the sake of you and I. Hand over speech, the last speech as a president to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But firstly, Okon, after Okon said, wasn't really about us. It was only about his lifelong ambition of leading Nigeria at the apex level, whether by military or civil rule. Like one who was honey, he has come pleasure, satisfied, done and dusted. Nigeria always means their past leaders cause things are always getting worse. My prayers, may we not have a Nigeria that we will sincerely miss Buari. God, I beg. Nigeria always means their past leaders because things usually get worse for us. May we not Weakness in Nigeria that we will be missing for the amount of worry. That's to tell you, say, dollar go reach 1,200. Oh, fuel go reach 500 naira. Salary will, salary will go down. You know, your money, there's no value for your money to buy anything in the market. Insecurity, wow, that's the kind of Nigeria you are wishing for us. If you are saying you are going to miss. I beg. But he but he did his best. According to what he said, it's even he got to leave that seat. See, he's tired, he wants to go. So let us list him. Take it, take time to list him. But firstly, before we go there, I think uh, that should be the last discussion here. Saka uh, Sari Dukumbo and his uh, and his uh, boys are in Abuja. They have been protesting in Abuja for a long time, trying to rally support for Tinubu. Although that protest for me is political, of course, is to show that I am very, very loyal to Tinubu and I want him to carry me along. No, some kind of contrasting need to be renewed in all those oil producing countries that are disturbed by disturbed by insurgencies. So contracting needs to be renewed. 
And the head of that contract, you know, people will lobby. And as I Dukubo, you know. And as I Dukubo always said that Tinubu assisted him. So he supported Tinubu right from time. He's still in Abuja. He's still in Abuja. And also, Pastor Tunde Bakari said, he will never. He said, I will never call Tinubu my president. That is treasonable offense. Because Pastor Bakari told say we never call Tinubu his president, that doesn't mean you. That doesn't have any means to fight for yourself. You know this country is all about power and money. That doesn't have followers, power or money to fight for yourself. Then you will start coming out to say, I will not call Tinubu my president. It's a treasonable offense. If Tinubu is sworn in, you are obliged to refer to him as your president. If not, you are in trouble. Hmm? He said, last Wednesday I was at the glass house where E. Buari has been restricted now because the main house is being renovated. I said, I have done that for you. I want you to know that because of the circumstances of the flying into power on the wings of in integrity and the incorruptibility, but you are now passing on to someone who does not have that value. Any public lecture anywhere before the mess is cleared off, I will address Asiwaju. I will address Asiwaju as the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria, but I will never call him my president. He said he will address Asiwaju as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but he will never call Asiwaju his president. Amira, of course, you already know Winches and Wizard are very much in support of Etunubu, and they said nothing is going to shake that day. Well, Polynesia is giving out a strong warning to Winches and Wizard. He said, stay where you are. Stay where you are. He warned all the witches and wizards. I said, coming to Abuja is going to end you. So stay where you are. Abuja belongs to us. He said, we are currently making an effort to clean and detoxify the Abuja environment where Tinubu will operate from. <laughs> uh, so meanwhile, some members of the association stormed Abuja earlier in weeks to carry out the uh, proposed cleansing and desertification uh, reacting to the development. Eniche, dear the witches and wizards, say, we are in charge here. You know, they are trying to desertify the witches and wizards in Abuja, moving around, show a continuity and doing what they do best. He said, there are some agents of the devil that say they are coming to cleanse this city. Anybody who is from the devil, sent from the pit of hell, that enters this city to plant any agenda of hell, if they are not cut off, then we have no right to preach. Every winches, lizard, and wizard, yeah, hey, we are served. We are serving you notice to let you know we are in charge here and we are not about to change our minds. Pastor, we are going to take prophetic action in this city within the next 24 hours. Carry a bottle of oil and go through the territories. Anoint the ground and pour oil on this ground. Every agent of the devil who step on this ground for a demonic agenda is a dead agent every agent of the devil okay now coming from the uh, pollinator so let us go to the main issue here Buari last speech let's listen to it i think it's our president still our president is the outgoing president so i think we should take time to listen to it because he said so many things he apologized for temporary pain and suffering that he have caused Nigeria. And he also said, as I retire home to Dara, I feel fulfilled. I am confident that I'm leaving Nigeria in 2023 better than I meant it in 2015. And like I said, he apologized for his economic policies that made Nigeria suffer. 
and friends of Nigeria. I address you today in my last assignment as a democratically elected president of our great and well-endowed nation with a deep sense of gratitude to God, a great deal of appreciation to the Nigerian people and a modest sense of fulfillment. Today, we mark and celebrate another peaceful transition of power from one elected government to another in our steady march to improve and sustain Nigeria's democracy. This year, we witnessed the most keenly contested presidential elections since the first republic. And this demonstrates that our democracy is getting better and more entrenched with each election. We must, as a nation, improve and sustain gains we made in the electoral process on an incremental basis for Nigeria to take its rightful place among nations. Our democracy provides for, allows, and encourages seeking redress for perceived injustices, enabling some candidates and political parties that do not agree with the results to go to court. Irrespective of the outcome of the various cases, I urge all parties involved to accept the decision of our court and join hands to build a better Nigeria. I salute the doggedness and the resilience of all the presidential candidates and their political parties for believing in our judicial system by taking their grievances with the election results to court. In the course of the campaigns, we had argued and disagreed on how to make Nigeria better, but we never disagreed or had any doubts that Nigeria has to be better. As you are president, I call on all of us to bring to bear the strengths of our individualism, the power of our unity, the convictions of our beliefs to make Nigeria work better and together with one spirit and one purpose. To my brother, friend, and fellow worker in the political terrain for the first 10 years, Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I congratulate you on the realization of your dream, which was fulfilled by abandoned fashion to put Nigeria among the leading nations of the world. You have indeed worked for this day and God has crowned your efforts. I have no doubt that you are fashion for excellence, reliance on confidence, fairness in relationships, commitment to equity, loyalty to the country and desire for Nigeria to be globally relevant would come through for you under God's guardians as you lead our country to levels higher than I am leaving. You are the best candidate among all the contestants and Nigerians have chosen well. The last eight years have been an exciting experience in my desire and commitment to see a Nigeria in which public goods and services are available and accessible within a united, peaceful, and secure nation. Fellow Nigerians, on the strength of your overwhelming support for me and my political party, I started this journey with a great deal of promise and expectation from you. I never intended to be just politically correct, but to do the correct things that will make meaningful impact on the lives of the common Nigerian. This high expectation was not misplaced because, like the ordinary Nigerian, 
I had grown tired of watching the country progressively moving away from the path of correctness. To ensure that our democracy remains resilient and our elected representatives remain accountable to the people, I am leaving behind an electoral process which guarantees that votes count, results are credible, elections are fair and transparent, and the influence of money in politics reduced to the barest minimum, and Nigerians can elect leaders of their choice. We are already seeing the outcome of this process as it provided an even playing field where persons without any political godfather or access to money defeated other well-resourced candidates. The Nigerian economy has become more resilient due to the various strategies put in place to ensure that our economy remained afloat during cases of global economic downturns. You would all recall the supply chain disruptions and economic downturn that the world witnessed between 2020 and 2022 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The depthness of our response to the pandemic still remains a global best practice. Furthermore, we increase the ability of the poor and rural Nigerians to earn a living, provide more food for millions in our villages, and give our women opportunities to earn a living. Young men and women in urban centers were also supported to put their skills into productive use. Our administration also provided an enabling environment for the private sector to engage in businesses for which their return on investment is guaranteed. The private sector proved a strong partner in our drive to build a resilient and sustainable economy as evidenced by the growing number of turnkey projects in various sectors of the economy. In the course of rebuffing the economy, we made some difficult choices, most of which yielded the desired results. Some of the measures led to temporary pain and suffering for which I sincerely apologize to my fellow countrymen, but the measures were taken for the overall good of the country. Mindful of the need to ensure adequate infrastructure to drive economic growth, we completed age-long projects and processes notably among which are the Petroleum Industry Act, completion of some power projects, completion of second Niger Bridge, and various important roads linking cities and states. Our battle to ensure that all Nigerians live in a safe and secure environment have achieved considerable results. As I complete my term in office, we have been able to reduce the incidences of banditry, terrorism, armed robbery, and other criminal activities considerably. To sustain the gains made so far, I call on all Nigerians to be more vigilant and support the security agencies by ensuring that our values defined by the new brother's keeper govern our actions. Up till now, I still grieve for our children still in captivity. Mourn with parents, friends, and relatives of all those that lost loved ones in the days of the senseless brigandage and carnage. For all those under unlawful captivity, our security agencies are working around the clock to secure their release unharmed. Fellow Nigerians, 
you know how dear the desire in my heart to reach the country of corrupt practices that had consistently diminished our efforts to be a great country. I did pursue this commitment relentlessly in spite of the expected pushback. I am happy that considerable progress had been made in repatriating huge sums of money back to the country and also taken over properties illegally acquired from our commonwealth. To improve our service delivery, we began the implementation of a number of reforms aimed at producing an efficient, productive, incorruptible, and citizen-oriented federal civil service, and the results are beginning to show. On the international scene, Nigeria's influence continues to grow as exemplified by notable Nigerians occupying headship and leadership positions in renowned global bodies. Our democracy is built on and continues to thrive on the principle of separation of powers. The leadership and members of the National Assembly deserve my appreciation for their patriotism, which did not detract from their roles as a check to the executive arm. I also want to use this opportunity to express my appreciation to a good number of Nigerians who provided their support and encouragement to help me navigate the exciting journey in moving Nigeria forward. I cannot and will not forget the millions who prayed for me during my illness in my first term of office. I am constantly praying for you and for Nigeria to thrive in peace. As I retire home to Daura, Katsina State, I feel fulfilled that we have started the Nigerian reverse by taking the initial critical steps and I am convinced the incoming administration will quicken the pace of this work to see a Nigeria that fulfills its destiny to be a great nation. I am confident that I am leaving office with Nigeria better in 2023 than in 2015. I thank you all and may God bless. Well, that's all. And he said it all. Let me know exactly how you feel. Although, Well, I'm going to reserve my comment. I'm wishing the best for Nigeria, like I've said before. I'm just wishing for the best. The best for Nigeria. There's nothing absolutely more than what I wish. For the best. For the best.